The term gerrymandering has come up, it would appear, on several channels due to the election of a black mayor in Derry. And I am going to be using the word Derry. I'm nationalist and it's Derry to me. And yes, I'm well aware why it changed for London Derry. So thank you for anyone who wishes to inform me about London Gills in the comments, but I already know about it. Um, you can feel free to call it set yours at London or yourself if you don't agree with my politics, but those are mine. But back to the subject of gerrymandering. Gerrymandering has a particular meaning, and many of the people using this term seem to be using a very loose, sloppy approach to it, which is actually quite irritating. Gerrymandering in representative electoral systems, gerrymandering, originally gerrymandering, is a political manipulation of electoral district boundaries with the intent to create undue advantage for a powered party. If someone could please point out to me where in the election of this lady mayor as in um, Northern Ireland that has gone on, I'd be very happy. You could possibly, and it's and it's a up in the air question at the moment, point to where possibly other candidates were ignored or passed over, but that's an up in the air question and maybe as much there as sour grapes or, or it may not. It's hard to know at the minute. Gerrymandering comes from the American politician and a founding father, merchant and diplomat, Elbridge Jerry. It has a rather weird and strange history. And I'm going to click on Elbridge Jerry's name here to show you. I'm not going to read all his life history because it's quite lengthy. And he was involved in a large number of things, including the American Revolutionary War, the Second Continental Congress, and all sorts of other stuff. That's really not uh, the main issue here. It's just the one issue I'm interested in. It's quite a lot further down here. Here we go. When he was governor of Massachusetts. Let me highlight this little section. In 1812, the state adopted new constitutionally mandated electoral district boundaries. The Republican controlled legislature had created district boundaries designed to enhance their party's control over state and national officers, leading to some oddly shaped legislative districts. Although Jerry was unhappy about the highly partisan districting, according to his son-in-law, he found thought it highly disagreeable. He signed the legislation. The shape of one of the state districts in Essex County is compared to a salamander, and by a local federalist newspaper and a political cartoon. And the cartoon is above on the Wikipedia. I'll scroll back up in a minute, calling it gerrymander. Ever then, since the construction creation of such districts has been called gerrymandering. Here you go. Here's a cartoon from March 26 in the Boston Gazette to 18 and 12. So we're going back quite a, a long way here. We're not far past the start of the US as a a separate entity, really. We're only it's only would have only been a, an independent state by the, at this point for um, three and a bit decades, really. Anyway, you can see how the cartoonist has, has done that and got that out of it. Leaving that aside. Gerrymandering also has a large history in Northern Irish history. Here's another um, article with a, a, a bigger um, reproduction of that cartoon from a history article, and I'll be putting that in here as well. And it also has gerrymandering increased when black men win the vote. It was used to move political boundaries around to keep people out of power. 1960s, redistricting revolution challenges gerrymandering. In fact, after the 1900 census, some states didn't change their districts at all until the 1960s. As more people moved to cities, particularly black Americans and immigrants, these states maintained districts that gave disproportionate power to white rural non immigrant Americans. The US Supreme Court changes in the 1960s was a series of court district decisions known as the redistricting revolution. Now, of course, that particular channel, um, that history channel is aimed at Americans and would therefore be likely to concentrate on them. 
But this document, which I'll go right to the top of again, Discrimination in Ireland, 1920 to 1939, uh, Myth of Reality by John O'Brien, Cambridge Scholars Publishing. This book first published 2010. Gerrymandering appears 19 times in this book as a, a, a tub. Let's go down to where it first appears. Chapter 2 considers politics, representation, electoral practices, outlines the origins of the Northern Ireland state, the evolution of the electoral system, and also deals extensively with the subject of gerrymandering, the infamous policy of redrawing electoral boundaries so as to disenfranchise one's political opposition. That's not what's happening here. No one's redrawn a political boundary with this lady. The term is being used in a sloppy and highly imprecise way. Now, I'm not going to read all 19 examples of it out, if anything, because this is quite a lengthy work. And it, it's quite dry unless you have a huge interest in this topic. But I'll read a few of them. Politics has forever been to the forefront of Northern Ireland's history and the ramifications of the political process in the province can certainly be cited as a major cause of much of the conflict experienced in the region throughout its history. Allegations of discrimination on the part of the Unionist government against the Catholic and nationalist minority in Northern Ireland and accusations of underrepresentation of the minority in Cabinet and on local authorities have been prominent, while allegations of gerrymandering of electoral boundaries at both local and parliamentary level have also been constant. This page just develops that theme again, so it's forced to use the word gerrymandering just to refer back to itself, more or less. And there you have 1922 there, after the scene was set for some of the most contentious acts of alleged gender care across Northern Ireland. I think I've made my point that a term like that should not be used in such a sloppy way. It should be used with some precision, especially where people uh, make the claim to be a historian. Otherwise, my, one might suspect that claim was based on, well, poor foundations, shall we say. <laughs> 